So, Von Palmer yesterday asked me if I have time for the dog, and uh, I know I've had those uh, those questions asked of me. So I'm going to address the things I'm committed to and how I think um, they work or don't work with within uh, this job that I've just taken on. I uh, teach a course, uh, an undergraduate course at University of Canada West in the business environment, and I'm obligated to that until the, the 17th of December. It uh, takes an hour and three quarters, two days a week, and I think I can weave it into a Green Party day. Uh, it's also really important because uh, it gives me an opportunity to talk about sustainability with future business people and to really challenge people to think differently about how business can be um, involved in this great journey that we're on. Yes, I have new members. <laughs> I've already signed up some of them. Um, uh, just as an aside, one of them said, well, would you like to teach at Camosun College? And I said, well, wait till after the 20th. <laughs> I have um, been elected to a spinal council. <coughs> Before I decided to enter the race, I asked uh, the mayor and the chief administrative officer what they thought, and they thought there was no conflict uh, between my duties on council and, and the Green Party, and uh, I've not come across anything so far that would be a conflict. If I did, I would know how to recuse myself. <clears throat> when I originally, originally thought about the process, I thought, well, I'll see it through the budget, which is May 15th. That's our, our contractual obligations from the government of, B, of BC. And then I might take a leave till the 1st of July and then resign. That's the date at which uh, you can re resign according to the Community Charter and the Local Government Act without the municipality having to hold a by-election. But I've re been rethinking that plan uh, because I'm making a difference on council and I'm making a difference in my CRD work at both the committee level and when I sit at the CRD board table. It also gives me a profile and if uh, by any chance, the recommendations of the electoral uh, boundaries commissions hold, then the, the uh, South Vancouver Island will change dramatically, and I think there are no safe seats uh, for the Liberals or the NDP. One of the proposed changes is that there will be a, a district called Victoria Spoimalt, and that's where I'm best known. So I think it would strategically be an opportunity to make sure I'm still highlighted in the press and in an area where people are going to read about me. The other thing that I think that... The other thing I think is that um, we're going into silly season at municipal council level where people start campaigning from the council table because they want re-election. I see Mike nodding his head, he's probably experienced that as a mayor. And uh, I think that one of the benefits of having someone that is clearly not going to be running again is that the mayor can make some non-political appointments uh, that um, make a difference for him. And he's intending to serve for re-election and I'm intending to support him. And it also gives me great opportunities. I get to go to events that you just can't imagine, the opportunities that municipal officials. We get invited to all kinds of things, um, seminars, uh, networking events, and I think it also gives me a chance to highlight my profile and uh, speak about things that are important. And again, I feel I can work the Espanol Council duties into my day and leave it into a Green Party day. It's not a full-time job. I get paid 10,000 a year, so it's, I feel it's an honorarium, and I feel I can do the job. So, do I have a plan? Well, uh, I do have a plan. I plan to rest for a couple of days. <laughs> uh, and I plan to call um, people that are really important to me. I have a friend who had surgery for breast cancer, and I haven't talked to her in months, and I feel very badly about that. Uh, and I have family that I haven't talked to for a long time and people who supported me financially and I want to spend some time on the phone talking to them first. Uh, I know that I've, I've been getting some advice the last few days that I should act right away on things. Uh, and I, I have to tell you that the motto I live by in life is one from a woman called Virginia Satir. She was one of the best family therapists 
that ever walked the planet. And her motto was, go slow to herd. And so that's, I'm going to use that as my uh, motto in this case as well. I'm going to buy a book on the natural step. I've read about natural step on Wikipedia, but I want to find out the scientific basis for it because I think it might provide us with uh, a way out of the uh, divisions that happen within the Green Party about who's the deep green and who's the light green. And I'm sure those of you who are deep greens think I'm a light green. So uh, we need to find a way to bridge that divide. for us about how it would work and, and people who are interested in parts of policy and would like to take a policy forward might want to come and learn that so that they could work with committees to try and uh, implement that into, into policy. I plan to meet with uh, Walter myers European to prioritize uh, the things that are important. I'd like to meet with uh, Provincial Council and get a handle on things that need to be done. And I would like to meet with the other candidates to see how they'd like to be involved. And I would consult with <laughs> and I'll consult with the former leaders um, of all stripes that will uh, give me good advice, I'm sure, to how I should go forward. So I don't have much plans beyond a couple of days. But, uh, but that's where I'm going to start. Uh, it, I intend to advocate to Provincial Council that uh, we should move the office to Victoria. And I know that's somewhat contentious in the party because Vancouver is recognizably a very critical part of our province. But I just can't spend my time and my money in transit. We need to get the party organized, and I think we can do that from Victoria with the intention of uh, trying to get regional offices going in many parts of BC, including the lower mainland. So that <laughs> so that uh, we are ready for 2009, and I tell you, Walter, Walter and I intend to be ready for 2009. Uh, fundraising. I'll spend my time there. I want because we need money in order to do the things that we need to do. And again, I would uh, like you to respond to Andrew's request to become a monthly donor today. And I intend to go to all the people that joined the party because of me and say, would you become a monthly donor? We need your support. donors to thank them and ask them if they can give more. I uh, plan to call the people who canceled their monthly donations for one reason or another, some because they didn't get their tax received on time, to ask them if they'll rejoin the team. I want to call the large donors, ask them to contribute to the cause so that we can get a good head start on things. And I plan to forego uh, part of my salary in the first year of uh, my mandate uh, in order to make my monthly contribution to making this party work. And I want you to know that I am a capitalist and I'm not uh, willing to forego it forever and I don't believe I'll have to. I believe we can bring the money in to support a, both the full-time staff people and to support the salary for the leader and hopefully for the deputy leader. Um, about what we might do to get ourselves ready. I think we need, and I thought, we need that kind of brutality. We need somebody that can say to us, we need to do this, this, and this. If you want to win, if you want to be competitive, you need to do this kind of thing. And I think she would be a great person. I, I imagine we also could uh, maybe ask Shane Joey and his team from Ontario to come in and say, how did you do that? 33%. The best show of any we, we have to know. We have to know how that was done, and maybe he could uh, help us uh, get ourselves ready. And I've heard of uh, other people who have um, been really effective in organizing campaigns. And I think we need to investigate: Can we afford to bring people in? Can we put on a high-profile training institute for ourselves? 
So I want to talk to you a little bit about my leadership style. I am not an alpha male. <laughs> So you will see a dramatic difference in how I lead. I am calm, except when I'm not. I'm strategic and I'm a feminist. And all of those all of those things will uh, be part of the persona that you see as your public spokesperson for what we develop as a party, as policy. I'm tenacious and I'm manipulative. <laughs> now some people don't think being manipulative is a good thing. I was a, a psychologist, a PhD psychologist, and that's what you do. You manipulate people so that they can see themselves in a different light than they could see themselves before. And uh, I do that at the council table and I do that in my municipality. If I can't get something across at the council table, I'll go to staff and say, I want you to do this. Comes back to council, it doesn't have my name on it, great. And uh, <laughs> I get what I want. Uh, I'm playful. Some of you will know that one of the biggest feedbacks I ever get is, you don't smile enough. And uh, that's probably true. I, I sit now at council table. <laughs> so practice in smiling so that everybody, I, I hope someday someone says, I've noticed that you smile more than you say. <laughs> anyway, um, I am playful. I do like to play. And I'm collaborative. And I do a lot of like networking and I, my uh, life is, network, is relationship based. I'm also very competitive. To a day before the Esquimalt election, I said to John, my husband, who I didn't thank really except for phoning, but he's been great. Uh, <laughs> I said, I'm going to talk to polls. And he said, Jane, you can't even think like that. <laughs> well, I talked to polls. And uh, so I am very competitive, and I will take us competitively into 2009. <laughs> I accept feedback and help, and I intend to ask for feedback and help so I can be a person that can present the green philosophy and the green ideas and the green policies in a way that you as members can be proud. Now before I conclude, and you'll be glad that I'm close to the conclusion, uh, I would be remiss not to thank uh, Provincial Council, uh, who have kept the party together in a very difficult year, I think. Uh, they were sort of abandoned by all the old guard and a uh, group of young, energetic, tenacious people came to the fore. And so I'd like to thank Christopher and Sven and Tom and Leanna and Andrew and Tina for all of the work that they've done. And if I've forgotten anybody in that list, um, you have my thanks as well. who I think we need as a candidate in 2000. <laughs> and uh, Jackie personally for making the last part of the campaign process more predictable and for being so responsible to our queries. It made the whole difference in the last two weeks of the campaign to have both of you there willing to respond immediately to our requests and to our emails and to be ready at the phone at the other end. It uh, just was a thousand times different than the earlier part of the campaign. And I think it was <laughs> I also want to thank the people that organized the AGM. It's been another successful AGM and uh, you've done a lot of work and it's a very difficult thing when all you hear is complaints, but you did a great job. And I want 
to most of all thank uh, members who voted for me and uh, those who attended the AGM and for all of the people who volunteered on all of the campaigns. I can't emphasize enough how difficult it is to be willing to put yourself out publicly and say, I'm intending to do this. This is my gift to you. This is my gift to the party. And it takes a team of people to support you. And I think we need to have a round of applause for all of the campaign teams of all of the competitive political force it needs to be in 2009.